And the um, thing that I want to say about this that's kind of amazing is um, Dr. Bruce Lipton, if everybody here is familiar with him, I'm not sure if he wrote the biology of belief. <clears throat> he says that we all have stem cells in our bodies. Right now, everybody here has stem cells. But after a certain age, those stem cells aren't working anymore. But we can't figure out why they're not working. What Peter Garriott was doing was he was taking a baby pancreas, a, a baby rat's pancreas, and he was passing light through that, which still has the stem cells that are working. And he passed that information to the DNA in the adult rats. And it seems to have regenerated their pancreas because it regenerated those stem cells. That information was being relayed. This is amazing stuff. It really is. Now another really amazing thing that this guy did, and again, this isn't in the mainstream media, so most people don't even know about this, is that he took two embryos. He took a salamander embryo and a frog embryo. He put them in two separate petri dishes. He took a non-burning laser light. He shined it through the salamander embryo into the frog embryo. And that frog embryo grew up to be a salamander. It was in every way a salamander. Its DNA was salamander. It grew up into a salamander. It was a healthy um, uh, subject of a salamander. And it was able to reproduce with other salamanders. In every way it was a salamander. It's just showing that this information is being relayed on light from one position to another, and it's rewriting the DNA. There's some structure, some information on that light, and it's restructuring the DNA for it to grow into something else. <clears throat> um, back in 1985, he came up with something that was called the DNA phantom effect. And what he would do is he had a, um, a sample of DNA in a tube, and he shined a laser through it. And then they removed the DNA and the laser still twisted and turned as if the DNA was still there. And they tried to blow it away, they put liquid nitrogen in there, and it would disappear for five to eight minutes and it would come back. And it would stay there for up to 30 days. There's something intrinsic in our DNA, there's, there's some kind of connection, there's some kind of connection with energy, and even though we may not physically be there, that energy still stays there. You, um, some, of these, um, some of these reports of hauntings in, in houses with ghosts may just be the residual of somebody who used to live there and not the actual you know, physical ghost of that person, but just the residual effects of them being in that environment because they were there all the time. This is something, this, like, something like this is sort of proving that. <clears throat> Here's another amazing thing. Uh, a man by the name of Budakovsky, again, uh, a Russian scientist. <clears throat> he took, uh, he had a raspberry plant that had a cancerous tumor on it. What he did was he, he went out and he created a hologram of a healthy raspberry plant took a, a red laser and he created a hologram of it. So he has this three-dimensional hologram of the healthy raspberry plant. And he takes it and he superimposes it over the uh, diseased raspberry plant, over the, the tumor. And within a few months, that tumor disappears and grows into a healthy raspberry plant. He's taken the information from the DNA from the healthy plant and he's transferring it into the diseased plant. What these guys are, are discovering is that we don't have to go in there and cut people open and take uh, genes out, splice out the genes and put them in here or whatnot. You can simply send the information in and the information will cause that cell to change. Um, it, it has to be certain frequencies. You, know, you have to know what you're doing. It can't just be any light. But the fact is that this is still uh, in its infancy, what we're finding out here. But the implications and the possibilities that the use of this stuff is, is really incredible, especially when you talk about people who possibly have lost limbs or need transplants, like kidneys, uh, hearts, um, things like that. 
<clears throat> what I want to just to touch on here really quick is about a communication. Um, and especially when I, uh, just to go back to Cleve Baxter, when he had that person 300 miles away from his cells, it's like, what, what is going on? Why, you know, where is this communication uh, coming from? There's something in physics called entangled particles. Um, entangled particles are two particles that when you affect one of them, the other one reacts instantaneously. Even if those particles are miles and miles apart, as soon as you affect the one, all of a sudden the other one will react. <clears throat> what we have, uh, let me see. oh, Einstein, Einstein was looking into this because this was something that he couldn't understand. Because the communication that was going on between these two particles was going on faster than light speed. And Einstein always said that there was nothing faster than light, than the speed of light. Well, that's why he kind of called it spooky action at a distance, because he couldn't understand it. Um, a new study shows that the signal passing between the separated particles, that if, if indeed there is a communication going on, that it has to be traveling 10,000 times the speed of light. Now, if anybody knows what the speed of light at is out here, it's 186,000 miles a second. We're talking about 10,000 times faster than that. And so they're saying, well, it's either that or there's something else that's going on that we can't explain right now. Physicist Daniel Szilard, um, he entangled photon pairs using a source in Geneva, and he passed them through fiber optics um, to uh, two villages that were equal distance away. Uh, they were about 11 miles apart, I believe. And um, the instruments revealed that there was entanglement and the effects of the Earth's rotation was taken into effect. The uh, conclusion of their study, which was published in uh, the journal Nature, shows that the particles did indeed mirror each other's properties at the exact same moment, even though they were 11 miles apart. They were throwing out the idea that it was traveling you know, faster than light speed because it was so phenomenally fast that there has to be something going on. And Dr. Terence Rudolph from the uh, college, Imperial College in London said, any theory that tries to explain quantum entanglement will need to be very spooky, spookier perhaps than quantum mechanics itself. One of the, um, one of the theories that they're posing is that the signal is actually going back in time and then going to the other particle and that that's, that's why it's not really traveling at that speed, it's actually going into another dimension and talking to that other particle. I believe that, that um, well, in theory there are many different dimensions and so in this three-dimensional um, world that we live in, possibly these two particles are very far apart. And even if they were at opposite, opposite ends of the universe, that communication would still be instantaneous. So could it be that in another dimension, these particles actually are touching each other? Or does this take us back to the idea that everything is one? And that when one reacts, or one is affected, the other one reacts. Um, I believe that this is sort of going back to almost proving that everything fundamentally goes down to everything is energy and everything is one. And that's one of the ways that this could be explained. 